That can be helpful. Taurine has been used to treat seizure disorders for the same reason. You might want to try 100 to 200 milligrams of taurine. The B-complex is very, very important for the whole circulatory system. If you are drinking a lot of caffeine and you're going to the bathroom a lot, that means you're going to be deficient in the B-complex of vitamins. So it's probably a good idea to make sure that you're replacing those B vitamins with the Beyond Tangy Tangerine. If you're going to be drinking your Monster Energy drink, Logan, you might want to try uh, doing some Beyond Tangy Tangerine with, the, with your Monster energy drink or after you're done with your monster energy drink to replace some of the nutrients that are that are uh, burnt up by the caffeine and that you lose when you go to the bathroom caffeine being a diuretic so uh, using the b-complex using uh, eating foods that contain the b-complex that can be helpful vitamin c is also very helpful it's a water soluble nutrient that you tend to lose the more you go to the bathroom and then all your electrolytes are going to be important as well especially potassium which has a sort of calming effect on the body and magnesium which also has a calming effect on the body if i were you i'd be using the osteomag from longevity as well as the beyond tangy tangerine which will get you those electrolytes and then also you might want to consider uh, vegetable juices and vegetable soups, which are wonderful sources of the B-complex in their natural form. We talked earlier in the program about the advantages to natural nutrients, to whole food nutrients, and you'll get those whole food nutrients, the water-soluble electrolytes in the B-complex and vegetable juices and vegetable soups. If you don't have a Vitamix, I like the Vitamix better than juicers because you get the fiber, but whatever it is, make sure you're using vegetable juices. And uh, don't substitute the uh, Monster Energy drinks for, for good good uh, good diet and for good food a lot of times the monster energy drinks will give you energy when you're uh, not getting energy from food so sometimes we'll substitute coffee or, or energy drinks for food and that's probably not a good idea so making sure that you're eating well is probably in your interest and if you're eating sugary foods breads and pastas and sweets etc you may end up with a, a crash you may uh, that high blood sugar low blood sugar roller coaster that we always talk about can be induced by eating sugary foods you end up low blood sugar and that's when you feel feel like you need the caffeine. So making sure that you're not eating lots of sweets and breads and pastas and fruits and fruit juices and all the foods we beat up on here on the bright side, and that can help stabilize your blood sugar and keep you from having that crash. So maybe it's easier to wean yourself off the Monster Energy drink, or maybe you don't even need the Monster Energy drink at all. Does that help you? Yes, I'm going to be doing all those things, eliminating the junk food and the Monsters. Uh, I'm also curious about aspirin and um just the idea of reducing cholesterol in general. Well, you don't need to worry about... Re you mean intake of cholesterol, dietary cholesterol? Is that what you're talking about? Reducing the uh, LDL, the, the bad... I, I don't really pay much attention. I don't put much stock in reducing LDL or HDL. In fact, I consider it to be one of the biggest scams in all of nutrition. People with low HDL, uh, so-called low good cholesterol, drop dead of heart attacks. People with high HDL uh, or high LDL live long lives. There's really... A, it's, it's a very weak connection between HDL and LDL and uh, cholesterol and uh, heart attacks and heart disease. There's much more important markers for heart disease uh, and the, probably the most important marker, in my opinion, the most important marker for heart disease is insulin, elevated insulin levels, and of course that gets back to sugar. The thing about cholesterol and lowering cholesterol is you're, uh, if you really are serious about lowering cholesterol, you're going to have to go the pharmaceutical route because food cholesterol isn't uh, lowering your food cholesterol, your dietary cholesterol isn't going to really affect your cholesterol, your, your blood cholesterol levels. You can't lower blood cholesterol levels by reducing your food intake of cholesterol, your dietary cholesterol. Really, there's only two ways to lower cholesterol. One is using pharmaceuticals, and of course we know about all the toxicity and all the problems associated with lowering cholesterol with drugs. And then the second way to lower cholesterol is to lower your insulin. And instead of worrying about your cholesterol, you might as well just worry about your insulin, which we know is a definitive marker for cardiovascular health issues. Unlike cholesterol, we don't know that that's a definitive marker for heart disease. It may be, it may be not, and there's a lot of evidence to suggest that it's not. But with insulin, we know for sure that elevated insulin as well as elevated blood sugar uh, will cause heart disease. So I don't pay much attention. I don't recommend anybody pay much attention to the whole nonsense about cholesterol. Rule of thumb, if the mainstream medical model believes it's true, be very skeptical. At least question it. If the mainstream medical model is pushing some kind of health strategy or pushing some kind of pharmaceutical mechanism for improving health or longevity, be skeptical. The history of the mainstream medical 
medical model, the history of medicine is not good when it comes to suggestions for how we take care of ourselves and how we improve our longevity. And this whole, uh, this, the, the, the beating the drum of cholesterol and lowering cholesterol and raising HDL and lowering HDL, I'm very suspicious, especially when you read studies, the results of studies like the Framingham study, which talks very clearly about the fact that you know, how high or low your total cholesterol is, your HDL or LDL, seems to be unrelated to whether or not you end up with heart disease. But you never hear about that. You just hear about drug companies' propaganda about how Mevacor and Lipitor reduce the risks of heart attack by 1% or by half percent or by ridiculously low amounts. To me, it's just much ado about nothing. Focus on the basics, and the basics are blood sugar, the basics are good digestion, and the uh, thirdly, uh, working on your adrenal glands by relaxing, activating the relaxation response. What was the second thing you asked me, uh, Logan, uh, about? Yes, something else. Aspirin. Oh, yeah, aspirin. Well, aspirin's a blood thinner. Are you meaning to thin your blood? Is that what you're thinking? On an ongoing basis, or even in the event of a stroke. Okay, I think you're talking. I didn't hear what you said, but I think you're talking about thinning your blood, and that's really why people use aspirin. Here's the thing: there's way better ways to thin your blood, and aspirin is still a drug. And even though it's a, probably not as toxic a drug as, as as many other pharmaceuticals, it's still a drug, and you don't need it. If you want to thin your blood, the best way to do it is by relaxing blood clots when we're under stress, especially relaxing using deep breathing techniques. Nothing will thicken your blood faster than hypoxia, low blood oxygen. So simply by deep breathing, you can go a long way towards uh, improving the circulatory, the movement of blood through the circulatory system. There's a couple other things you could do. Thanks so much for your call, Logan. I appreciate it. EFAs, by the way, great way to thin the blood. All right, we'll continue talking about methylation tomorrow on the Bright Side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Have a wonderful, beautiful day, folks. We'll talk to you all later. Bye for now. Self-reliance, survival supplies, survival skills, national experts. Get it all at the only free-to-attend national event exclusively for preppers. This spring in Tulsa, it's the National Preppers and Survivalist Expo, a must-be-there event. Presented by American Living, this massive expo will include special guests. David Bays from Nat Geo's Doomsday Preppers. Plus, GCN Zone Dr. Joel Wallach via live video conference. Here, Dr. Bones, Nurse Amy, and members of the American Prepper Network. Along with many other leading national experts. Learn life saving tips, CPR, how to handle crisis situations, walk through a bomb shelter, and much, much more. Two big days, April 5th and 6th at the Tulsa Expo Square in Tulsa, Oklahoma. That's April 5th and 6th. Doors open at 9 a.m. with absolutely free admission. Don't miss the National Preppers and Survivalist Expo, America's largest emergency preparedness event. Get your free tickets now. NPSExpo.com. That's NPSExpo.com. Time and time again. You need to come here and help us. We need assistance. Please. Those we should be able to depend on let us down. Federal and state and local officials saying help is on the way. Well, the folks here in Bell Harbor say show me. Don't depend on the government to save you. Take action now so that you're prepared for the next disaster with MyPatriotSupply.com. Get the best prices on storable food, non-GMO seeds, water filtration devices, home canning equipment, survival and self-reliance books, and more at MyPatriotSupply.com. Call 866-229-0927. We are hurting down here, and we need help immediately. Before it's time to survive, it's time to prepare. MyPatriotSupply.com. MyPatriotSupply.com. 